Hi everyone and welcome to Festival TV. Over the summer we'll be bringing you the very best of Dublin's community festivals and we're kicking off right here in Drimna. In the show preview we'll be showing you Drimna's rich history, getting our kicks at Our Ladies Hall and we'll also be joined by magician Jack Wise which you definitely don't want to miss. This is the next 15 minutes here on Festival TV. And to kick off the series, I'm joined by Amanda Whitehead, one of the organisers of the Drimna Festival. Now, Amanda, how long has the festival been running? We are four years old this year. Four years. Holy moly. And what are people going to see this year that they haven't seen in previous years? A lot more. So this year, we've got a Teen Line Talent stage, which is kind of the big focus of, of the Saturday events. So it's going to be like... Um, it's so, a like, kind of stage for all the local performers to perform on. So we've got a lot, of, a lot of acts from the local area. Like we've got Sing Act, Sing Act Dance, who I keep pronouncing wrong. But Sing Act Dance is their name. And we've got the Diamond Twirlers. We've got some Bosco singers. And then we've got some bands as well. Some up and bands are going to come over and perform for us as well. So um, that's a major, major thing for us this year. We've never had some, anything like that before. So um, that's one of the things. Jack Wise, who we've mentioned already um, in his sword swallowing, He's nuts, but uh, he's going to do some sort of swallowing on the day. Um, he's also a ventriloquist, he's a pickpocketer, he's a magician, he's a, a comedian, you know, he's, he's just nuts. So yeah. do you think there's been a sense of excitement around the community? Definitely, yeah. I was talking actually somebody yesterday from Sing Act Dance and they were saying everyone, everyone they talk to knows about it as well, So, oh, which brilliant. is pretty good for us because yeah. that's never happened before either. So I think this year is our biggest year yet. So what's your personal highlight of the festival? I think this year for me um, would be the, the, the Teen Line Talent stage because it's something we've never done before. It's something we've pulled, we've pulled together. Um, and a lot of bands that are coming over, they're doing it for free, like, you know, so. And it's all to, it's to promote Teen Line, it's to promote Drimna, it's to, you know, Teen Line lost all their funding this year from the HSC. So it's to raise funds for them, essentially, is what that stage is going to do. Um, but it's also to kind of give local bands a place to perform as well. So. And how can people find out more information about the festival itself? So we have a Facebook page, um, which is facebook.com forward slash Drimna. Um, and we've also got a blog, which I've only just started update, updating as well. Um, but what I've been doing is I've been doing kind of interviews with local people. Um, like I did one with Jack Wise. I did one with the guys who are looking after the stage on the Saturday. Um, I found a guy who used to live in Drimna, um, who doesn't live there. He hasn't lived here since, since he was a kid. So I interviewed him recently as well. So um, but that's DrimnaIsGood.com. Thanks a million, Amanda, and good no luck worries. with the next few days anyways. Thank you very much. Next up, we have local historian Michael Kyo, and this is his three-minute tour. This is Lansdowne Valley. It's belonged to the Marquis of Lansdowne who had 250 acres in this whole area, which included Drimna Castle and all the way up that way to the right and to the left of us. And here we have the River Camac, which runs from the Ballascorny Mountains all the way down and out into the Liffey through the lands of Lansdowne. And that's where it's called Lansdowne Valley. Now it is very crooked as you can see, and this is supposed to be where Crumblin got its name, the Crooked Glen, or the Crooked Stream, in the Irish language, Crumlin, although there's always disputes about that, but that's the origin of Crumblin, which started here at this part of Drimna. This is the best part, actually, of getting a look at what it's like, the Crooked Glen, from this end. This is Drimna Castle, and this is where Drimna got its name from the Sandy Ridge. The castle itself dates back to the 12th century from the Barneville family. The Christian brothers then, after several um, owners, took over the school here, or the castle here, in 1954, where the first educational boys were brought in and they had uh, classes in the ballroom before the actual school was built out there around 1957. Welcome to the new Drimna. The previous bit you've seen was the old Drimna. This is the new Drimna, which was developed between 1930 and the 1940s. People came from the inner city out here to live. And on the left there is the, is the school, the, the primary school, and which later became a secondary school, which is Skullmur Nodjak Kolya, Our Lady of Good Counsel. And that was where I went to school as a kid. 
This is Our Lady's Hall, Moan Road. And this was built, as I said earlier, by the community who gave the subscription of money, of a pound of brick, I think it was, to actually build this. And in here, practically every Sunday, we had a, a show bands. Some of the most popular show bands in Ireland played in here. And they also had the Drimna Musical Society as well, so we had musicals. So it was a fairly cultural area from that point of view. This is the brick fields. Um, all of this green area that you see here and down further towards the canal was all part of the Dolphins Barn uh, Brick Company. And the Dolphins Barn Brick was a very distinctive brick. It was a yellow brick. So this area is a, a playing field now and a lot of football pitches here. This is also part of the Brickfield Works, believe it or not, even though it's on Sleeve Namon Road. All the houses uh, were not there at the time, so it went from, from uh, the Crumblin Road right down to the Lewis stop here on Sleeve Namon. The Shaolin monks of Eastern China have such intense concentration that they can throw two decks of cards in the air and bring them down upright. Some things should just be left to the professionals. Fortunately, Drimna is well served when it comes to martial arts, as Koketsu discovered at Our Lady's Hall. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is a style of martial arts uh, which involves joint locks and submission using leverage rather than power. We are here at the Drimna Community Centre, a women's only uh, boxing centre, where we meet Dave, a Brazilian uh, Jiu-Jitsu blue belt and Irish international kickboxer. Let's head inside. Hi Dave, tell us a bit about yourself and how you got involved in kickboxing. I got involved in kickboxing when I was around 15, so I've gone back a few years now. Uh, I started training with Joe Canning down in Sing Street. And uh, from there, I represented Ireland a few times uh, over in America, England, and I just recently came back from Brazil where I was over there training another martial art called Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. And um, I came back with a black belt and we started a club here. He's since gone back to Brazil, but I'm keeping the kickboxing going. What do you think is your role uh, in the festival that's coming up as a kickboxing club? The role that I'm going to be playing is just showing the demonstrations, showing people what we can do and all, and just showing the training side. Show them what sort of a walker they're going to get from it. Uh, do you think kickboxing teaches uh, life lessons? I do, yeah. I think a lot of people nowadays are very frustrated and they've got a lot of stress, work related, and all that sort of stuff. They come down here for an hour and just unwind, unleash a little bit of stress, and as it says, get them fit as well at the same time. Okay, so the first move I'm going to do is going to be a jab. It's the basic move. When I throw it, I'm going to step forward with the front foot as well. So it's a little and come back. So you twist the hips into it, out, and back, and back. My name is Anna and I started, well, I started training with Dave about nearly five years ago. Um, I was pretty overweight and wanted to lose weight and get fit, so I started off just doing general training with him and then one-on-one -on -one he had me boxing, so I got pretty into boxing and ended up doing uh, white-collar boxing and some fighting and kickboxing, and that's pretty much it. Instead of getting ambitious. Yeah. Hi, my name's Aoife. Um, I live in Drimna, around the corner. I started Boxer Size about 18 months ago, clearly to keep fit, but off of coordination. Um, but I love it. It's great fun and best people you could, you could meet. And I'm really, really very happy doing it. I love the buzz I get from boxing. It's a total stress relief. You feel tired when you get home, but you feel exhilarated. I just think everyone should try it and feel powerful. Whoa, you've seen the girls do their thing. We've met Anna, CJ, Aoife, and Dave. If you want to see more, come to the festival on the 13th of June, Friday. Uh, I'm out. Now, next up on Festival TV, it's a privilege to welcome Jack Wise, Magician, ventriloquist and international man of mystery. Now Jack, how did a young lad from Dublin 12 become World Street Performance Champion? It must have been a crazy journey. Well I started out doing magic when I was maybe 10 or 12 and uh, I learned it in spar, nicking sweets, using sleight of hand to 
procure things that didn't belong to me, um, which used to amuse my mates in school. And then I, uh, I kind of went through school. I wasn't much of a, I wasn't much of a student, to be honest with you. I definitely wasn't a grade A student. I uh, didn't turn up for a fair bit of the leaving cert and. Through the jigs and the reels, I ended up working at nightclubs, performing performing close up magic in in the VIP suite in the pod. In the pod. Then I started doing some stand up comedy. A friend of mine booked me into the Haveney Comedy Club without telling me, which then she gave me two weeks warning. I thought the crowds wouldn't like um, the kind of mix of magic and comedy, but they they loved it. So uh, then I went from there to doing a few festivals, and a guy called Mark Duckenfield, he saw my act in the Laughter Lounge. And he asked me to do some stuff at the Street Performance World Championships, which oh, I won wow. in 2010, yeah. And then did a kind of tour of the States and, uh, and Canada. And is it important for you to keep a sense of fun in your act rather than going down the melodramatic route that a lot of other magicians take? I just think telling a, an adult that you're magic and expecting them to believe you is uh, it's a bit special, you know. It's a bit kind of like, it's questionable. And what on earth possessed you to take up sword swallowing? I saw it at a, at a fair in in Donegal there was I don't know it was like must have been a circle I was young and I just went this guy's cool would you like that's to give really... us a taster right now so we can all see yeah no problem no problem here it is that's my sword 24 inch solid steel sword okay so here we go which way we go we face this way yeah yeah okay Oh my god, that's unbelievable. Yeah. I can imagine I'm going to need these strap salts. Oh yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> well, that's great. That was absolutely unbelievable, Jack. Thank you very much for hey, coming on. Welcome. We appreciate it. Yeah, if we look forward to seeing you on Saturday. Yeah, if you'd like to see more of Jack, he'll be in the GAA Good Council Ground on Saturday for the Dribbling Festival. But now we're going over to Joe Quinn with the boys and girls from Sing Act Dance as they prepare for their performance for Saturday. Hi and welcome to Festival TV and we're here in Our Ladies Hall in Drimna and we're here to see and talk to Sing Act Dance who are going to take part in this year's festival. I'm from Drimna originally. Um, I studied in Liberty's College in town to study uh, drama. So ideally I wanted to set up this in Drimna because when I was growing up there was no classes available. When I decided when I finished college this is what I want to do. I want to set up my own school in Drimna and give back to the kids because there's lots of talent here. And what sort of stuff are you singing and what are you acting and what are you dancing to? Um, well first of all we have to start with current songs because everybody knows the words to them so to get them happy you, get, you got to pick what they want to do. And uh, dance styles we would do musical theatre, hip hop, jazz, contemporary. So you'll get a little bit of that later on if you're lucky. And uh, we'll have a bit of singing as well. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> Hi Sophie. Hiya. So what song are you going to be singing at this year's festival? Um, in the festival this year I'll be singing uh, Rather Be by Clean Bandit. Like I'll be standing in front and then the girls will be dancing behind me. Yeah, are there much preparations for the festival day? We've had like uh, hard practice every week and uh, Tony's been uh, hard on us to make sure we're on point on the day. Hi Ella. Hi. You've been here since early morning practicing again for the festival. And how is the preparations going? Great. And what are you doing in the festival? Um, I'm an understudy for singing and I'm going to be dancing. I do acting in school and um, I like writing poems and stories and all. And I bring them into school and read them out to the class. And do you have a lot of friends here? Yeah, all, everyone is my friend. So, we're joined here by Emily. So how did you get involved in Sing Act Dance? Um, I was actually in a skill talent show in December and Tony was helping out with it and he was talking about this uh, Sing Act Dance and he was saying, oh, I think you, like, you'd be into it and all. So I came down the first week like, for a trial. That's what I loved that I did, like, so I came back. Brilliant, and you play guitar. I'm actually doing an original song in the show on Saturday, I am. Yeah, That's so brilliant. Should well, be good. Thanks. 
And that's it from Sing, Act, Dance in Drimna. So it's back to the studio now, but I've been made an honorary member. <laughs> so we'll see you all at the festival. That's it for today. We have another packed show for you on Sunday where we bring you all the fun from the fair from the opening day of Driven Festival. Stick with us on Festival TV and I'll see you again on Sunday. Mm -hmm.